G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Uh, I've taken a bit of a hiatus, well, not by choice, but uh, I'm officially back. My internet was uh, cut short, and by cutting short, I literally mean some monkey with a shovel severed my fibre cable down the road. They were doing some, uh, some stuff, uh, and unfortunately they cut the cable, which means that uh, that left me without internet for about almost a week. But that's okay, because we're back now, and we're back with disappointment, unfortunately. We're going to be having a look at some games that uh, could have gone a little bit better, but unfortunately were cut short by uh, a couple of interesting things, mostly the team unfortunately falling apart, which does happen, and there's only so much that you can do to uh, try and carry a match, especially at Jet Tier. Now, for the most part, War Thunder is a fairly enjoyable game. You would kind of be surprised to hear it coming from a YouTuber, but... Uh, Honestly, I quite enjoy War Thunder, and um, you know, I'll be flying out some top tier jets. Most importantly, uh, I don't really care to discuss Phantom vs MiG in this particular video. Uh, I think I might save that for another one, but uh, for the moment, I th I'm pretty certain, I'm, I'm fairly confident that the F4 Phantom, at least the Phantom E and the F4 EJ, are in okay spots. They don't seem to be the absolute top dog. But that doesn't mean that they are more than capable, and this video is kind of going to show you a little bit how. And that's all I'm really going to say on the topic. Um, but what I do in the Phantom is I go off and climb. The thing that you need to do is sort of look for a spot uh, where your enemies are not going to be, so you can have a little bit of an altitude advantage. Uh, but most importantly, you just want to be above most of your opponents, but you do want to be level with some of them, and that will give you some opportunity to use those aim 7s. Now, I have had a couple of issues with the AIM-7s, uh, sort of flying in a straight line and then just exploding for no reason. Uh, I still don't quite know what causes it, but I do know that if your radar has a little bit of interference, there is a higher likelihood of it. I've found a higher incidence of your uh, missile just going poof and uh, destroying itself if you have a little bit more ground clutter or if you don't have a, uh, a patent lock. Uh, I suppose there might also be a little thing with the radar. As you can see right now, uh, there are two circles on my radar, and that large circle there tells me the maximum range of my missile. And it's well within my radar range, and he is a MiG-21. He's uh, going to get himself gonna get himself uh, killed right here. And I think the missile there has uh, basically decided to home itself in, and there we go, very, very easy kill on a uh, plane that is not paying any attention. I think that was a PFM, if I can actually read. Now, the next thing I spot is a teammate in trouble. Now, teammates in trouble are really, really good to help out. So what I'm going to do here, even though he's popping flares, I'm going to prep a 9J, and the 9J is on its way, and it tracks, and gets me an absolutely stunning kill. The 9Js track phenomenally, and here you can see I've just put the plane down, the nose down, and I'm belting it towards my, uh, my allies here. What I didn't take into consideration were the enemies behind me. Now, you can see them popping up on the radar. And uh, I don't quite know how this guy manages to get the better of me, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see later. I'll, I'll kind of show you later. So, within the range of two kilometers from the uh, MiG-21 there, I managed to take him out very easily. There's that Mirage there, and he is eventually going to be the death of me. And I have no teammates to really uh, back me up here. Most of them have fallen apart, which is, you know, it's sad, it sucks. Um, what does suck as well is the Jaguar which uh, I was pretty sure at this point the missiles were going to track the, uh, the friendly there, but uh, I managed to get two Yeaters right off, one on the Biss, one on the Jag, and the Jag is going to go down very, very shortly. Now, I'm looking at this Mirage here, and I'm trying to figure out how I can get away from him. I actually don't know. I thought I could just uh, put it into a climb and get away from it, uh, but it turns out that this particular missile is probably going to go for my booty hole, and yep, sure enough, the uh, missile manages to track perfectly. I suspect that that might have been a Matra Magic 1, and uh, that's the first match done and dusted. Unfortunately, we definitely did not win that. And uh, yeah, it's really sad because I was hoping to really enjoy that match, get a few more kills and maybe put it up on the channel in a little bit more of a positive light. But unfortunately, that's how your matches go sometimes in War Thunder and that's kind of just what you have to deal with. Next up here, we have a MiG-21 here who uh, I don't think is paying attention. I'm going to launch the 503 and it looks like it's going to track beautifully there onto the PFM, set him on fire, and absolutely destroy him. The PFM is a bit of a sad plane, and I don't really think it has much of a chance against the uh, the Mirage in any of the, the slightest, really. Next target here is a MiG-21 MF. I know he's an MF because he's got the German marking on him, 
uh, the, uh, the 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 Vulcan crews, I think. And uh, our third target here is going to be a Seal 13, which really should not be in this matchmaker at all. And of course, the Matra Magics track perfectly as usual. Going for a little bit of a spray there on the PFM there, but the F104A manages to pop him off without much of an issue. And uh, that's pretty much the enemy almost decimated. Uh, so in the Mirage, you do have a lot of a chance against things like MiG-21s uh, and even some of the some of the Phantoms as well. Uh, but what I will say is that if you do lose your energy, you tend to not get it back quite as well as something in a MiG-21. Uh, you do have a lot better low speed handling, but if you lose that energy, you really, really suffer. Plus this thing goes through fuel very quickly. So you need to be extremely mindful. Uh, but that is the way of the Delta, unfortunately, losing all that speed uh, and not being able to get it back nearly as fast as you might hope. So, speaking of not getting it back, the uh, PFM is not going to get that plane back. Unfortunately, he's going to go into the dirt and back to the hangar. And the Q5 here wants a piece of me, but unfortunately, China not number one, and uh, the missile is heading straight to the Q5. I think he manages to dodge it, but I, either way, I've basically managed to reverse the Q5. He is jetting away from me, but that's only because all he has is some speed. Now, again, very, very close call from the F-104A. I almost get myself taken out by him. Uh, and I'm just going to sort of uh, focus on the Q5, but keep an eye out for that 21. Now, do take note of this particular MiG-21. Uh, he is going to come in nice and close, and I think that was a bit of an ambitious missile for either me or for him. I make a big mistake here. I didn't realize that I didn't have the speed. But regardless, uh, the Mirage excels in that low speed handling and the MiG-20 on BIS excels in energy. So consider the Mirage something like uh, the Spitfire of top tier. It doesn't quite retain energy, but it does turn extremely well. Uh, maybe you can consider the J-35 the, uh, the zero of uh, top tier and the F-4 Phantom as the P-47, the MiG-21 BIS as the GAX. Surprise, surprise. Uh, the British, unfortunately, are a little bit Pepega. Uh, they also get a Phantom, so you can consider that like a P-47 as well. Um, the F-104S could be, I don't know, like the F-84Gs, you know, where they just sort of zoom and uh, and zoom some more, and that's about it. You, you do actually have a fair variety of uh, top-tier jets. It just seems that the MiG-21 BIS and the F-4E and EJ are the real kings here. And once you sort of get to that territory, you don't actually get many other jets that can... They can they can fight it without a problem, but they just aren't at the same quality. They're not quite at the same level. And unfortunately, whilst the uh, 10.7 Mirage 3C has plenty of armament to, uh, to, to deal with its opponents, it sort of gets superseded by the Phantom and the MiG-21 in both its performance capabilities, uh, especially in terms of energy, which I would argue is more important than turn rate, um, but of course in ammunition capacity, meaning the number of missiles that they carry, uh, as well as the efficacy of the guns. I would argue that the, uh, the GSH-23s, whilst being the worst, are still fairly competent, but the uh, Difas or Aidens that go alongside the Mirage 3 are not really so much. I would personally rank the Difas as the second worst after the GSH-23s, and of course the Vulcan sits well beyond the uh, sort of top echelons of what you would expect uh, based on the other two of the uh, cannons at top tier. Don't get me wrong, the Difas do a phenomenal amount of damage, but unfortunately here I am out of fuel, which is one of the issues again with the Mirage. There are, there are too many things holding it back. Don't get me wrong, it is a fantastic plane. Uh, but compared to the BIS and compared to the F-4E and the EJ currently with their radar guided missiles, I genuinely believe that the Mirage 3C has been superseded well and truly. Uh, when it was first introduced, it was definitely capable, uh, and it still is capable, but uh, to a lesser degree due to the uh, sort of lack of armament and the overall lack of performance, despite being able to catch certain planes like the F-4E at uh, low altitude, of course, which kind of surprised me. However, in this case, I think it may have been because that particular plane had uh, something like 20 minutes of fuel, uh, and of course, maybe he had ditched the uh, 530. I think it's the, the, the big chonker of a missile. Either way, it's a decent plane, but I would personally uh, think that there needs to be another step up. And what we could do is maybe we could set aside a video um, and discuss the next sort of step of uh, War Thunder's jet combat. And uh, no, just to get it out of the way, it's definitely too early for the F-14. Anyway, in the Mirage here, it does have a fairly good glide slope, which means that 
if you do run out of fuel, uh, you have a fair, well, like a fairly strong chance of returning back to base, provided that you have enough altitude in the beginning. Uh, another thing to note is that the Mirage does chew through fuel for some odd reason. Um, it must have a fuel consumption rate on afterburner of uh, double of what uh, the poor little afterburn, the non-afterburning version or the, the non-afterburning stage of this engine has. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in nice and slow. I can't see any enemies, which is a really good sign. It sort of means that I, well, I mean, it's not a really good sign because I don't actually know where they are. I can live in blissful ignorance and pretend that, hey, they don't really sort of uh, have any have any issues here. Um, and just as a quick side note, I'd like you guys to have a look at the pylons and see that little sort of trailing on my screen recording there. Um, I'd kind of like to know what that is. Do I need to look into a new monitor? Because I really don't like it and it's bothering me. You know what also bothers me? Uh, airway strafers. This uh, particular MiG-21 BIS has uh, decided to set me on fire. And luckily, because I have no fuel, I can start repairing. However, he's going to go and air st airfield strafe the uh, friendly there. I think it's the F-104. And of course, he is going to come back. Now, this is exactly the reason why I get really pissed off with um, War Thunder sometimes. It is a great game, but honestly, this is the one thing that really just makes me a little bit upsetty spaghetti. The airfield changes, the airfield AA changes that I proposed in my uh, video, which you should go and watch, by the way. I'll put it up on the, the card on the video you know the little thing that pops up on your right hand side that should pop up about now uh, for you to go and watch alternatively you can go and search for it on the youtube channel but realistically i would just absolutely love for a change to uh the airfield aa situation because honestly that was kind of pathetic and it's kind of a cheap way to win the match uh, not only that it didn't give me a proper opportunity for a fight which kind of sucks it's uh you know very dishonorable but anyway, ladies and gents, on that absolutely salty and sour note, I would like to thank you very much for watching. Do check out my other content, and I will try and have some more stuff for you later. But until then, take care, and I'll catch you next time.